wait to your classmates paying attention. Okay. Similar to, on page 14, paragraph 51, it states Herbert White says, well, I don't see the money, and I bet I never shall. Furthermore, this explains that Herbert White is still very sarcastic towards the money's law. Table three. Similar. Similar to similar to the previous statement, Herbert is still in the denial, and this is illustrated in paragraph 61 when Herbert said, "Well, I don't see the money," which was followed by him saying, "And I bet I never shall." To explain, Herbert makes it clear through the through this statement that he did not believe that the money will come. Okay. Table two. Um, we put similar to the previous statement on page 14, paragraph 61. Herbert says, "Well, I bet I don't, or well, I don't see the money, and I bet I never shall." This explains his doubtful approach towards the monkey's paw. Table one. Similar to the previous statement on page 14, paragraph 62. Herbert states that. Uh, he doesn't believe they'll get the money. This explains that Herbert is doubting the money, the monkey's paw, and that he doesn't think the wish will be granted. Oh, okay. Table seven. Read yours again. Three years again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, did I say this one? Okay, similar to paragraph 52, page 14, paragraph 51 states. Well, I don't see the money set as son as he picks it up and places it on the table, and I bet I never shall. This evidence portrays that Herbert doesn't believe their wish will be granted because he still doubts the powers of the monkey's phone. Okay, table six, three George again. Uh, similar to paragraph 52, page 13, paragraph 61 states, Well, I don't see the money set his son as he picked it up and placed it on the, on the table, and I bet I never shall. This shows Herbert's disrespect and skepticism towards the phone. Table 5, read yours again. Similar to paragraph 52, paragraph 61 states, Well, I don't see the money that is done as he picks it up and puts it on the table, and I really never shall, describing that he does not believe in the monkey's fall. Table 4. Similar to on page 14, paragraph 61, it states Herbert White says, Well, I don't see the money, and I bet I never shall. Furthermore, this explains that Herbert White is still very sarcastic towards the monkey's paw. Table 2. Um, we put it similar to the previous statement on page 14, paragraph 61. Herbert says, well, I don't see the money and I bet I never shall. This explains his doubtful approach towards the monkey's paw. Table 3. Um, table 6, can you just read the explanation for it again? I don't need to hear the quote or the beginning, just the explanation. Uh, this shows Herbert's disrespect and skepticism towards the fall. Table 7, read your explanation again. This evidence portrays that Herbert doesn't believe their wish to be granted because he still doubts the powers of the monkey's paw. Table 4, read your explanation. Furthermore, this explains that Herbert White is still very sarcastic towards the monkey's paw. Yeah, We're going to vote between, um, wait, table four readers again. The whole thing or just this thing? The whole thing. Similar to on page 14, paragraph 61, it states Herbert White says, Well, I don't see the money and I bet I never shall. Furthermore, this explains that Herbert White is still very sarcastic towards the monkey's paw. So this one, the information is good. Do you mind if I give some constructive criticism? There's like extra words that don't need to be there. Like at one point you say says and states. That's you. It's almost like you're saying says, says twice. Okay. And then there's something else. Read it again. The whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Similar to on page 14, paragraph 51, it states, it states Herbert White says, well, I don't see the money and I bet I never shall. Furthermore, this explains that Herbert White is still very sarcastic towards the monkey's paw. And then that I would just take out furthermore. So that's one of those times where like you got like sometimes like less is more. 
and sometimes more is becomes too much like it starts to become distracting the information you have in there is good but it would just need to be like cleaned up okay it's 5 10 guys and um what did i do today i know i took some footage of me driving to work and I know I turned the camera on to capture like how I've been doing writing, but I also know that at some point the camera ran out of memory, so I don't know how much footage of that you got or that you will see. So you may or may not have seen that already. And um, honestly, the days, like, I don't know, the, the last few days have just been getting away from me. Like I've been so focused on a task or using my time effectively that when I turn off the computer and pick up my bags to leave, I realize, oh wait, I haven't even like checked in at all. And that's what happened today. <laughs> um, I'm gonna see how I feel after Orange Theory, which is where I'm going right now. I need to take that class and I need to walk Riley. And so I'm gonna see if after that, I feel like articulate enough to share what we've been doing in class. I sound like a broken record when I say I wanna show you this video that I show for the American Revolution. And then we've really been working on this writing assignment for much longer than what I thought. And just when I was really starting to beat myself up for just like how long it is taking me to get both classes through this, I remind myself that when I taught third my first year, um, a few years ago, I was always significantly behind my um, partner teacher, my two partners teachers. One was Jenny, who you, if you've been watching for a while, you remember her, and then one was Peggy, and I think she popped in every now and then, like significantly behind, like a couple of stories behind. And I always felt bad, but I also at the same time felt like I can't imagine going any faster, and the pace that we're going at is such because like, the kids need it, like based on what they're saying and based on how the lesson is going. And so I just kept saying like, this is what they need. I don't wanna rush them through it just to say I got through it. Um, and I was like, we'll just have to trust that this is the right thing for me to do. And that was the year that my classes, and this is not a brag, but also I am proud of myself and I am proud of those kids from that year. This was that year that my classes in both subjects, language arts, and math scored the highest at school. Like they had the highest proficiency rate amongst all the grade levels um, in language arts and the highest proficiency rate amongst all grade levels in math. And so when I was beating myself up about how things are going right now, I had to remind myself like this is how it was then. You trusted yourself and what you are seeing in class and that the pacing that you're taking is correct even though it's slower than what you thought and everything worked out. Like they learned very thoroughly what you wanted them to learn as proved by their ability to perform on those tests. So that is what I keep telling myself, but I did not really teach any history today because I'm like, I really want to be able to move forward and have them have an opportunity to start writing on their own. So with language arts, oh, that car just literally ran that light. Um, I don't even know what I was saying because I'm so shook by just the blatant danger that car just put people in to run that light. Um, so yeah, it's taking long, but at the same time, like we need to wrap it up because I need to kind of see what they do on their own. So I'll either show that to you when I get home from my home office or I won't. I, like, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I will say in the spirit of the conversation that I had yesterday where I was like, I need to really mentally reset and start setting some better boundaries for myself. We're a month in now. Like there comes a point where you have to be like enough working is enough. Um, so last night I went to bed at 10 o'clock knowing that I wasn't going to wake up um, at 4.30 to get ready to take a Peloton class and be on that bike by 5 because I was going to go to Orange Theory today in the evening. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to bed at 10. I'm going to wake up at 5 so that I can get to school like So that was my intention when I went to bed. And then of course the alarm clock was off this morning and I just like couldn't even get myself to get out of that bed. So instead of getting up at five, I got up uh, 
And I was like, you know what, let's just see how this goes. Like, if we're really talking about setting boundaries, why do you feel the need to say you can't just sleep in, you can't get any extra sleep on the mornings where you're not working out before work, and that you have to get up earlier to get to work earlier? Like, where's that rule even coming from? Why is it? Do you really need it? And I was like, I don't really have anything pressing that I'm drowning in or that I need to do. So let me just get up at 530 see how that goes and see if I get to work at a time where I'm satisfied with and guess what guys I got up at 5 30 got dressed and sure enough I still got to work early at the time I would have at the time I thought I would have gotten to work had I woken up at five and I got an extra 30 minutes of sleep I got seven and a half hours of sleep instead of seven so I just feel like that was yet another lesson of like it's gonna be okay Latanya like if, if you're teaching or you're thinking about teaching, um, we all need to know and remind ourselves that there literally is never an end point to teaching. And I, I'm sure I've said this before. Like it's not like the job that I had before where I went to work and the end point was when my shift was up and then I didn't think about it again. There's always, 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 always going to be something to do in relationship to teaching. Even when you're on break, even when it's Thanksgiving break, winter break, there's always, always, always something to do. So to try and work to get to a point where you're all done is ridiculous because that's never going to come unless you're retiring. So um, I have to remind myself of that and, and stick to that so that I am getting you know, a good amount of sleep and I am not feeling like I'm only working and that I can go home and just eat dinner, sit on the couch and think about nothing of importance and just decompress. So that was a nice little lesson for me to see this morning and I need to keep that up. I know that there's going to be times of the year where that's not going to be possible because it's just a busy time of the year, but that should be, it, it should be the exception and not like the norm. And I felt like that was becoming the norm. So anywho, um, this class starts at 530, it's 517. Liza should be there this time. And as far as my working out with the sciatic, it's it, if anybody's had sciatic pain and you've recovered and you're working out after the fact, like it's almost like my left leg feels like a phantom leg or an imposter leg, like it's not a member of the rest of my body. So when I run, it feels awkward. And at this point, I don't know if that's like a, a physical reality, like it really is that way because I'm healing or if that's a psychological thing, which is causing me to feel awkward when I run. But it's a little discouraging because my running speed is slower because I'm trying to be careful. And um, obviously I'm more careful and more conscientious in the weight room. So um, I just have to try and be patient. But I do like being able to do Orange Theory and the Peloton and having that mix. So we're trying the schedule out where I go to Orange Theory on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which means I don't work out before work early in the morning on those days. And then do the Peloton Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and maybe Sunday. Sometimes on Sundays I just stretch. So that was a lot of talking. I'm almost there. So I'm either going to see you later and talk about what we did in class. I'm going to see you later and once again apologize for not showing you the things I keep telling you I'm going to show you and promise you that I'm going to do it tomorrow and hopefully I actually get it done tomorrow. Time will tell. We'll see what happens. So I'll talk to you guys soon.